Howdy, howdy. It is Farmer Juan from the front side for the first time in a while. Um, just sitting here in front of the greenhouse taking a little bit of a break. I turned off the ventilator fan so that you could actually hear what I'm saying. This is my first attempt at using my narcissism stick. Uh, selfie stick that was given to me for my birthday a while ago. Uh, it's supposed to have a little battery thing on the handle that'll turn it on and off, but it's burned out, so I'll have to charge it up, but I thought rather than trying to hold the thing out at arm's length, I'd give this a whirl. Uh, just having a chat. Uh, I'm going to do a garden once over here uh, in a different video, but something I wanted to talk about was uh, we've been going back and forth. A newfound friend of mine on the western slope, uh, Russ. Uh, going back and forth of what it actually means to live off the grid and I think that's kind of an inane kind of argument but we always say when people ask that we're mostly off grid and that's just kind of paying deference to the fact that we actually have one hookup um, some purists will talk about being off the grid means not being hooked up in any way fashion to public utilities power sewer water that kind of thing and we are off the grid, except that our power system is hooked up to the main power grid. Uh, we generate almost all of our own electricity, electricity, but we use the power grid as a backup. And so the farm, right now, our weakest link, I would say, has to be in sustainability, would have to be having to still have propane brought in. And between having propane brought in or being hooked up to a natural gas line, I don't see either one of them being <laughs> all that useful. Uh, propane has a lot lower BTU capacity and, you know, it's not cheap. And some guy with a truck has to come out and fill up your tanks when it runs down. So one of the things that we're looking at trying to do is add solar hot water. Uh, when <laughs> you look <laughs> We live in big sky country out here, even if we're not in Montana. And we do have property in Montana, so that qualifies too. Um, but if we could heat our, our water with solar, which out here you can almost make it boil, uh, that would drop our propane expense and usage down to practically nothing. Uh, we have a wood-burning stove in our basement that we really can't hook that up because of the new regulations. Uh, but we do want to put in kind of a, a rocket mass heater or a pellet stove or a dual, dual fuel kind of stove. Uh, and we'll get that going. That wood stove will go out in my garage because it's kind of funny that the guys in, for the county said, Oh, no, you can't put that in your house. Well, okay, but can I put it in my garage, which is a tin barn, uh, and use it when I'm working in my shop? Oh, sure, no problem. So, well, what's the big deal? I mean going to give off the same particulate matter whichever house or dwelling it's in so there's that <clears throat> so we're off the grid when it comes to uh, hot water you know we're not on a on a natural gas line uh, we're on a well uh, we have a well it's 265 feet deep water tables at about 80 85 and it has uh, the, the our solar system has a backup system so it actually will pump the uh, the well in case the power goes out we won't be without water uh, we also you can see over my shoulder here at the barn under the awning is a thousand gallon water tank that we can use to uh, grab water off that roof because Colorado now has made it legal to harvest rainwater that's a thousand gallon tank and if we it's only half the roof that's hooked up to it and if we, uh, sorry about the jumbling around here, this thing is not intuitive. Um, but half the roof, if we got an inch of rain, is 600 gallons. So an inch and a half of rain, or the equivalent in snow, will fill the thing. And the uh, second evolution of that is we're going to put uh, two 250-gallon tanks in our basement so that at the end of the year, what water we don't use out of that tank, we can run it down and siphon it into those tanks so that we have it in the wintertime and we don't have to worry so much about having to heat that tank uh, because up you know out here <laughs> it's just like in just about everywhere else in the country if you're not down south that sucker will freeze and that's not good for things that are made out of polypropylene and plastic and so forth but our main signature here is that we do 
create all of our own electricity. Um, and we use the grid as a backup. So our solar system, and I'm going to try and turn the camera around here to see if we can actually do this without having to turn the selfie stick around. I don't know how I do that. Maybe I'll have to anyway. Sorry. So I'll do that. I'll just turn it around. Uh, a little over my shoulder, I guess. Am I doing that right? <laughs> Fuck it. Um, there we go. It's a 6700 watt solar system. And it powers 10 basically golf cart sized batteries. They're deep cycle lead acid batteries in the basement. And the way the solar system basically works is that it generates the electricity in the panels. It sends the power in DC form down to our uh, charge, charge controllers. The charge controllers keep the batteries charged and make sure that they don't overcharge. Uh, if they get depleted for any reason, it senses that and sends power back to the battery so that they can be charged up again. Then the electricity goes into our inverter, and our inverter turns it into AC. And that AC is used to power everything just like you would uh, if you were connected to uh, your, your, your power system with a power company. And the way ours is set up is that we generate our own electricity. If we need more than we generate, it pulls it off the grid. If we generate more electricity than we use, we sell it back to the grid. So it creates a little bit of a bank for us. And the reason for that is, is twofold. One, in the springtime, I'll do something a video of that sometime, in our basement, I have in the spring, starting about the beginning of March, over 4,000, 4,500 watts worth of grow lights in our basement running because uh, we start all of our own seedlings and have thousands of plants in the basement and we get them all growing so that when we get to planting season out here they're already ready to go. Our tomato plants are usually about three feet tall before we actually take them outside. So that uses a lot of power and it also uses a lot of it at night because the, the lamps are on from about six in the morning to nine o'clock at night. So the solar panels provide most of the power but not for those hours of the day where the sun is too low in the sky to do any good or dark outside uh, and you know the short days of winter so that helps and um, we don't have to worry then that uh, you know if the power goes out that uh, we have to worry that our freezers are going to melt now on the other side of that in the dead of winter we also run at least six seven eight uh, heaters that are in all of uh, the water tanks for our critters and those mostly run at night because that's when it's cold and so that's when the solar panels aren't generating any power the batteries would be taxed on that because that's several thousand watts of power at night and so what ends up happening is that we use up the bank of electricity that we have sold to the power company it comes back to us and it helps to power those at night the biggest reason that we did this other than being you know kind of ecologically minded even though i have found out that solar panels are just about as bad as everything else because of the way they're made uh, it's more for our self-sustainability rather than i guess any altruistic good um, is that when i was still working we had and still do have but then had anywhere from four to six hundred pounds of meat in our freezers three freezers two refrigerators and if the power were to go out, and out here if a mouse farts, it knocks the power out. Um, and I'm working in the city and we're not here, uh, we don't know what's going on. And we couldn't afford to have that all, all go down. I mean, that's the one thing about running a homestead. If you raise most of your own food and some of it fails, like our garden did last year, you've put all that money into it and all that time and effort. And it fails. And now you have to go out and buy everything that you were going to raise. So it's kind of a double whammy. So it's a little bit of insurance. So that's what happens. We're, that's why we're grid tied. Most of the people that would call themselves completely off grid, not tied to anything at all, will have a solar system. They might have a wind turbine, although those are kind of overrated. 
they'll have the same kind of battery system that we have set up, the charge controllers, inverter, all that nonsense. And instead of being hooked up to the grid, they'll have some kind of a backup generator that burns either diesel, gas, or propane. Um, so you still have the same kind of setup that we have. We're just using the power grid because it's right here. The house was hooked up to it when we moved in and it gives us the ability to have kind of redundancy because not only do we have the, the solar or the, um, the power grid backup, we also have a 7,500 watt dual fuel generator that in the worst case scenario, and at this point I can't imagine what that, that might be, uh, we just run extension cords out to the thing and we've got it all backed up. I could hook it into the inverter, but I don't want to spend the money and it's not that necessary. So when the power goes out, interesting, during that bomb cyclone that we had, worst weather I've seen out here in years, and uh, power never went out, didn't have to use it. I was convinced that when that storm blew in, we were going to be on batteries for days. Never happened. Two days ago, we had a basic thunderstorm blow through here. We had the power out for six hours. Now, that's kind of funny because out here with all the farms and everything around us, uh, the whole place is dark not a house had lights on and I'm in there watching YouTube videos so it's kind of fun uh, and it's really nice to have that backup so off-grid we are for intents and purposes off-grid and for people who don't necessarily think that most of them are probably sitting in a suburban living room watching videos in an air-conditioned house um, so you know who cares uh, we are solar we generate God 90% of our own electricity except when I have really heavy loads and I told you that's with the grow lamps and at night in the winter time when we're heating water heaters. We've got a well, we've got water backups, we are working on solar water, hot water, uh, our waste system is septic and uh, Zeno wants me to uh, build us a composting toilet for outside too so that'll help with some of the wear and tear on the septic system. So and of course propane propane heat so that's us that's what we do um, and on top of that which a lot of the YouTube homesteaders really don't do an awful lot of I'm not sure why you would not want to is that now now that I have our greens set up so that I can grow all of our leafy greens pretty much year-round now I do it hydroponically in the basement um, I would guess we have renewable breakfast with the chickens, bacon, and then over an acre garden. I would say about 85% of the food that we eat, we grow. Um, there's obviously going out to eat once in a while, and there's uh, there are things that you'll want to get at the grocery store that you can't make or grow and you can't find uh, simply because of the growing conditions. But we grow most of our own food, so there's an off-grid situation right there. So anyway, I just want to address that. Uh, there's always people questioning or criticizing what it actually means to uh, be off-grid. And our, you know, and purists can, you know, they can just bite me. Uh, I've gotten really no time for it. Uh, and if you want to come and see what's actually involved, rather than talking so much about it, you're more than happy to stop by. Anyway, I uh, didn't want that to turn into too much of a rant. I wanted to more explain the situation, uh, why we always say we're mostly off-grid, not completely off-grid. And uh, that's just, just being fair to the fact that I have a wire run from my solar panels to a uh, power line. One wire. <laughs> And they get the they don't they don't get a lot of my business. So anyway, um, I'm next next uh, video up will be to go and do a tour of the gardens now that things are growing well. Actually, take you in the greenhouse and uh, which we were avoiding because our tomatoes got bit really bad with the cold snap that we had, and we didn't know if we were going to have to actually go buy seedlings. That would have been horrible. It'd be like a root canal. <laughs> anyway, so uh, thanks for watching, and I guess the selfie stick works. I'll have to try it with the battery charged up at some point, but uh, it's easier than holding it at arm's length. Anyway, Farmer One, out for now.